Let's talk to Ronnie Chopra. He's the Chief Market Strategist for Knightsbridge Trading Academy. Very good morning to you, good morning. Ronnie. Right, so let's kick off with silver this morning. Uh, we've got two charts to run through. What are your thoughts here? I think it's, um, it's very unloved at the moment. And just as a ratio between silver and gold, historically, the average is about 60 times. Okay. So 60 times the price of silver, one ounce, should equal one ounce of gold. At the moment, the ratio is 80 times. So from that point of view, it's undervalued. Also, with silver at the moment and with gold, because they generally move in tandem, although silver has a much higher beta, so it moves a lot quicker than, than gold does. Um, with the uncertainty in the equity markets at the moment, silver is a, an alternative asset class to look at. So again, taking that kind of diversified area, uh, I think silver and gold should be uh, in one's portfolio. And currently, with the price around $16 an ounce, it's come down from 18 19 over the last 12, 18 months. I think there's a lot of value there, especially with the whole geopolitical uncertainty. And, uh, I mean, like, Trump is going to respond to the Syrian chemical attack, so we could have a, a fairly sharp movement in the next week or so. And so, with the current price, I don't see much downside. Historically as well, 30 years ago, the price of silver was over three times where it is now. It's over $50 an ounce. Okay, we've got a second chart for sort of the longer term chart. Yeah. So wow. That, so, so it spiked then. It was basically, there was the Hunt brothers. You probably remember them. I don't, but they yeah. cornered silver, didn't they? They cornered yeah, silver, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. So they, they basically manipulated the market. Yeah. And then the uh, US government intervened and they lost all their money. They were billionaires and the richest people in the world, the two brothers. Um, so obviously fifty dollars back in nineteen eighty compared to sixteen dollars now, thirty eight years on, fifty dollars then, well that's probably the equivalent of about two hundred dollars now, isn't it? So just from that kind of point of view as well, silver is extremely unloved. Okay. So they say gold is old now in terms of this well, new sort of is, is silver old? I don't think so. I think again, as I was saying, the uncertainty in the equity markets at the moment will mean that there will be a shift back into the likes of silver and gold. It's unloved, and again, putting my contrarian hat on, yep. it's, it's probably time to pounce. Understood. Okay, well, let's move on to a stock now, and this is um, Hemogenics. Um, what's caught your attention here? Well, this is a, a, a small company capitalised around 10 to 15 million pounds. But they've just made a, an appointment um, to the company, a non-executive director who's very knowledgeable in this field of uh, leukemia and lymphoma, blood disease. And this company basically is it's a pre-clinical um, pharmaceutical company, a small company that is involved with the curing of um, leukemia and uh, lymphoma. So they've, they've appointed this well-recognized professor, an, an English gentleman, I've, his name um, I've, I've forgotten, unfortunately, but uh, the, the, they've had some decent results. And they've also had a, a joint partnership with a large US company. And, and it, it looks pretty good. I mean, it's very small, but uh, it, it's getting a lot of attention with the, uh, with, with the area of, of blood disease. Okay, so that's one for people to do their research on. Let's wrap up with Tesco's. You've been a bull of Tesco's uh, when everyone else has been bearish. What are your latest yeah, thoughts well, into the numbers? They've had a good good year compared to the rest of the sector, um, especially the retail sector has been in the doldrums, but Tesco, as we can see in the chart, it's been relatively strong. So tomorrow it has its results. They're forecast to be very good. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of a Recovery story, you know, with also the acquisition of Booker, the synergy benefit should should be coming through now, and that uh, they're getting stronger and stronger. But also, the the thing is with Tesco is that they're increasing their margins. I think I've said this before that at the moment the margins are only around two percent, and they're forecasting that by the year 2020, margins should be around the three and a half to four percent mark. So if that happens, they're going to make double profits. So the shares are extremely attractive. So we continue to keep those in our portfolio? I think so, and well, we'll get confirmation of that tomorrow. Understood. Ronnie, on that note, thank you very much indeed.